are. I know we just talked about a few chips, but these are kind of the the chips aside uh, from from automotive, uh, particularly from uh, AMD and and Intel and and some GPUs from from Nvidia, and also a shout out to uh, Synaptics as well. So. Uh, first off, uh, AMD. So, sorry, let's actually start with Intel here uh, with a, uh, a special goodbye to um, the industry's friend, GB. Actually, we're going to talk about that, so let's move on here. So, Intel releases 12th gen uh, um, uh, notebook parts uh, originally earlier in the year. Actually, at the end of last year, they brought out their desktop 12th gen. And I think the highlight of... of their 12th gen is its big little architecture. And I know that's an ARM trademark, but but I like the idea because it explains that essentially you have performance cores and you have efficiency cores, P cores and E cores. Very hard to manage um, uh, those uh, between them, uh, particularly in the operating system, which is why uh, Intel worked pretty closely with uh, Microsoft on it. There were a couple fits and starts which 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 actually daniel was about a cpu id for games as opposed to uh not running well it just wouldn't load but they they got through that they made some enhancements and i i think at least for arm architecture and and intel this whole notion of big little uh is is a big deal here so uh intel came out with um uh some pretty beefy notebook processors uh they have a p series they have sorry they have an h series uh they have an hk series and they have um uh two other series and in fact we had uh uh chris from intel on to go through it uh u series for ultra ultra mobile p series kind of sits in between the legacy h series and the u series so Anyways, if you're not confused now, uh, no, actually go in and read read the article. Here's here's my net net in comparison to AMD, which I'll talk about. Um, I think Intel did move the needle on this uh, in terms of potentially gaining a little bit of ground on AMD. Um, AMD brought out their 6000 series. And again, I haven't benchmarked any of these, but when I do some back of the envelope, I feel like... Um, even if I consider what AMD brought out, there will be room for Intel to move up a little bit. I'll put the asterisk that Intel has, you know, 80% market share, but it appears as if they're uh, they're way behind, but not in notebooks. It's actually a much more even type of competition between uh, the two companies. Intel also brought out uh, discrete uh, uh, discrete graphics for notebooks. Um, and we're expecting those to come out in the first quarter. Uh, they leverage all the special um, features that that come with um, the graphics, like ray tracing, XE, super sampling, and uh, and Deep Link. The one question on Deep Link I have, you know, AMD had this technology a while back that kind of leveraged integrated GPU and discrete GPU, used both the GPUs. Uh, AMD actually got rid of that feature because it required two kind of symmetrical uh, GPUs. Uh, otherwise, you really weren't getting much of, of a boost uh, uh, at all. So um, I'm, I'm really looking into that uh, really hard. So uh, AMD brought out, not only did they bring out the 6000 uh, series uh, mobile, which is six nanometer based on a Zen 3 plus core, the graphics also is RDNA 2 and all the fun features that go along uh, with that, like uh, FSR. We will see. On the GPU side, uh, uh, AMD brought out um, a an inexpensive uh, card, uh, the uh, 6500 XT. That you know is a couple of hundred dollars. I can uh, I can't even imagine though them shipping stuff like that in volume, but um, I have to give them the uh, the benefit uh, of the doubt. Uh, last but not least, uh, Nvidia um, uh, Nvidia brought out a GeForce RTX 3080 Ti or Ti, um, regardless of which camp uh, that you're in. 
uh, featuring Max Q with uh, 16 gigs uh, of RAM. I think this had a lot to do with keeping uh, keeping AMD at bay. <sighs> I'm just gonna take a breath. That was yeah. so much. Uh, you know, I, I Pat, you kind of had it. Your article is great, and so we'll make sure that we put this into the uh, show notes so that people can read because you really broke everything down. You broke down the automotive stuff. You broke down the the, the PC stuff, the discrete graphics stuff, and you hit it across uh, across the board. Um, you know, we're starting to see a turn in the supply side. It's going to be interesting to watch if that sustains, but we're starting to see that get into better shape. And we're, you know, we're continuing to see innovation. I said this when we talked about notebooks, and I'll talk specifically about this. In the end, all this technology is really the underpinnings of things that people want to be able to accomplish. So, you know, you got things like commercial and Evo, you know, where there was a number of announcements where they're trying to make you know, a series of PCs that are really ideal for a security and an operational standpoint for, for that mobile workforce. And you've got the gaming community here, Pat, you need more power. Uh, you know, we're seeing, mo we're seeing mobile notebooks now that are becoming increasingly capable of handling, you know, cloud gaming and, 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 and next generation gaming, because, you know, just like mobile gaming, um, you know, we're seeing that there are certainly the people that sit there at their desk and can game all day. And you're seeing the people that want to be on the train. And, you know, some of them now with 5G type connectivity, always connected devices are going to be able to game on a bigger format device on the, you know, while being mobile, you know, and, and having all that to say, you know, in the next year, Pat, I think you're still going to see what's going to be interesting to consumers and businesses is going to be lighter, thinner, more powerful, but less power consuming uh, PCs that last longer. So, you know, one of the things that immediately caught my eye with like AMD's announcement was the potential 24 hour battery life. Now, of course, that was under very, very friendly circumstances, no Wi Fi. I mean, who uses a device that way? Nobody. But can we get to the point with these new architectures where these devices can truly last? And Pat, I pulled dead laptops, new dead laptops out of my bag when I travel way too often. Hot bag. Like, yep. You know, I don't even know how it was on let alone dead. But I mean, I get there, I'm like, gosh, I'm plugging it in again. And this, by the way, is all variants and varieties because we have them all. So, you know, having put that into perspective, as I see it, you know, it's the outcome that still matters. But as geeks, you know, we always do love all these little specs and advancements, new packaging, new process. This year, uh, hopefully, as we get to the last topic in a few minutes, um, we'll talk about why PCs are still hot and why all these chips are going to continue to drive the demand into the future. 